close, aren't you? <laughs> She's got four seconds to spare. One. Good evening, all. Open the regular meeting of Tuesday, September 15, 2015, the Stillwater Planning Commission. Uh, item 2A, Monopoly Brothers LLC, Plumber and Platt, requesting review and approval of Plumber Platt of 27-acre parcel, address 1798 North Payne Street, to create 133 residential lots. We received a memo to postpone this item to October 20th, 2015. Is there a motion? Move to postpone. Second. Motion passes. Item 2B, Kearns, Robert Kearns map amendment rezoning, requesting review and approval to rezone a portion of the property address 799 East Mercury Avenue from IG to NCZ Neighborhood Transition Zoning and CS Commercial Shopping. Sevens? Good evening, Patty Evans, Development Services. <laughs> um, this is a map amendment for the property shown here in the hatched area. Uh, you can see it, it's, it used to be one piece, this whole gray area here, and we had a minor sub recently on it, and he's divided it into three parcels. And this parcel here has already gone through a map amendment uh, to CS, CS, commercial shopping. So um, just keep that in mind, even though that's not on here. Uh, the ordinance, I don't know if it's gone through in, in you know, the 30-day publication period and all that to get to our GIS. That's why it's not shown on this map. Uh, this is Perkins Road here and Mercury, and this is Marine. Uh, the property to the north is RTM, that's Aspen Heights, and like I said, this is CS. CS down here at the corner, RSS to the south. This is Ag, and this is Industrial, IG. Uh, this area, as you can see, has, or probably know, has been undergoing a transition lately with um, the RTM that used to be Industrial and so it's changed and developed. This corner has been developed now uh, and with uh, this changing to a different zoning. So it is in a transition period. Um, the, the, well, let me go back. The north parcel he is requesting CS commercial shopping, the same as this little piece over here. And the south is a new zoning designation that we have. It's NTZ, and that is a neighborhood transition zone. And with that neighborhood transition zone, um, it's a step down from, or step up, I guess, from uh, any neighborhoods or any platted uh, residentially zoned RSS or RSL neighborhoods. With the NTZ zoning designation, it only allows uh, single family, two family, or duplexes and townhomes. So it does meet or is compatible with the C3 plan. But the CS or the commercial is not compatible with the C3 plan. Um, and that is uh, low density residential is the land use that's future land use. The NTZ zoning district is appropriate for the south parcel due to the adjacent platted RSS zoning district. And the areas to the north and west have changed in the last several use, years to commercial and multifamily residential areas. So it is going undergoing a transition. Are there any questions? I have a couple, Patty, if you could bring that map back up. Mm -hmm. I assume on that Oops. map that the, the black line denotes the two different parcels. Is that yes, correct? this is the division. Do you have just a rough idea how many feet that is from the like the back of the RSS zoning to the for that parcel that would be the NTZ? Uh, it's 
probably about 120 or 140 roughly because that if you put duplexes on there or single family home it has to be I believe 100 or 120 feet deep um, lots okay so I mean that's all hypothetical but there would be probably some type of a road that would transition the two properties right so they the could have would even uh, set even farther single family conventional single family or the duplexes or townhomes in here okay. and then Any other questions? Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Anybody that would like to speak in favor of this amendment? State your name and address. I appreciate it. Roger Ghost, 113 East State, here on behalf of the applicant, Mr. Kearns. Uh, that distance, 165. 165? Yeah. And that, that's based on like 100, oh well, a center line of a street. And then lot depth I think of 120 feet so um, um, the you know we tried we're trying to do this NTZ NTZ zone which was just approved and um, it would um, not allow townhouses for because of the abutting property but it'll work here that's that's why we're bringing that to you as an option and um, the CS we're just trying to get some zoning that will be allowed on that piece of industrial land that got overridden by the comprehensive plan. Any questions? Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak in favor of this? Anybody that would like to speak against this map amendment? Anybody would like to speak against this map amendment? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Okay, the alternatives are to accept the findings and recommend to the City Council to uh, approve the MAP amendment or to find that the MAP amendment is not an appropriate use and recommend denial or to continue or table until uh, we have more information or discussion. Any questions? I don't have any questions. Since I just, my only question was, since the NTZ is approved but not finalized, it, is there anything that would change should the final, you know, in terms of before finalization to this? It, it was, um, the second reading was done last night and it was published today. Oh, okay. So basically we're just having to wait that 30 days and it's done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So it, it's, technically been sort of finalized, but it has been published and therefore not finalized. Um, <laughs> it's been to published. Put it, in it, was, it came out in the paper today. It's published, but it's uh, or it supposed to be. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we just haven't gotten the ordinance in the planning department yet. I move we accept staff's findings and recommend approval of the map amendment. Second. 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 The motion passes. Item 2C, Grace Presbyterian Church, specific use permit, request and review and approval specific use permit to construct a church at the property address 1220 South Blakely Street in the RSS District. Mr. Coots. Yes, Tom Coots, Development Services. We'll request for a specific use permit to construct a church on this property. It's highlighted. The property is zoned RSS, which is residential, small lot, single family. The property is surrounded on the north, west, and south sides by RSS zoning as well. Um, the uses uh, on the north of it is a detention pond. Um, then on the south and west sides are residential, flatted residential lots. To the east, is the property is zoned office, and that is the SMC, Stillwater Medical Center uh, property, which is uh, underway, being developed, for the Stillwater South Campus. Then uh, kind of, uh, I'll just use the mouse, this area over here, also a zoned office. Those are some, some uh, 
office buildings that front on 12th. This is the site plan. As I said they're wanting to construct a church. The church is about 9,100 square feet. Um, they're showing 64 parking spaces. I should say this is a pretty preliminary site plan. I think they're mostly interested in, in whether or not the use will work on the property when we come in. Um, with, for the actual building permit, there would be a lot more details when we get to that that point. Um, sh they're supposed to be pretty much the same general idea. Um, I should say on the parking uh, specifically, uh, since we don't, they don't have like a building architectural plans for the church yet, I'm unable to review the, the project to know if the appropriate number of parking spaces are shown. So uh, if by chance they're way off on their parking, we may be back here with a site plan if the, the plan changes drastically. I should also point out the plan shows a, a vast uh, open area to the north of the church. Um, that probably will be another phase someday, but because we're not showing as a phase on this um, application, they'll have to come back before the board again if they do come to uh, do an addition onto the church or add, add more to the big parking area. The church also owns these two uh, residential lots. Right now the plan doesn't show, as you can see, any use of those uh, properties. Um, once again, if they come in and decide to use them for some sort of church-related use, we'll, we'll be back here again with a revised site plan. Notice they're taking access off of Blakely Street, which uh, has direct access to 12th Avenue. So although that's uh, in a residential area, they do have pretty easy access to an arterial street without having to go through a neighborhood. Um, this is kind of a rendering of, of the building, uh, just to give you an idea kind of uh, what it'll look like. This um, On this side would be toward Blakely Street, and so we're looking kind of north, northish. This. So staff findings include that a specific use permit is required in the RSS residential small lot single family district to permit a church on the property. The proposed church would have access to, to Blakely, would access Blakely Street, which has direct access to 12th Avenue. The property is located adjacent to the office zoning district, which is across the street on Blakely. And then office zoning and office uses are located in the vicinity. So the point is there are some uh, higher uses in the vicinity than residential. Um, this would be basically consistent with the C3 plan because it is a specific use in the residential zoning district. Um, specific uses require this public hearing for uses that are more intense than what would normally be, about, normally be allowed in the residential district to allow for the planning commission and city council to uh, see if there's anything that needs to be mitigated to the neighborhood and impose any conditions on the, the development if needed. So do we have any questions for me? Would there be any restrictions or what would the restrictions be since they own those two residential parcels if they wanted to do an entrance for whatever reason through that? It's not on the site plans, and that would be a, I would consider a major change okay. if they came back to try to do that. So we'd be coming back through. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. I'll open the public hearing. Anybody here to voice in favor of civic use permit for Grace Presbyterian Church? Favor? In favor? Yes. Yes. If you would come up here and state your name and address and state you're in favor, I would appreciate that. Okay. Uh, also, uh, I'm J.R. Reeves. Uh, address is on Avondale in Stillwater. Okay. Um, the parking, I think, is we have 200. I think they, uh, I think they can see it right here. The, there's 200 uh, people for inside the church, and so I think the parking requires 41 spaces, and we put 61 or 64 spaces at this time. And then two lots are for expansion of the parking lot as we need it for future use. And so that's what we were gonna try and do with it. So if you ever have to expand the parking, that's you'll have to, you have to come back to Yeah, this but it's for those two, acre, or those two lots over there. Okay. And then, the, of course, the north side would be for an expansion on the actual church, okay. which we would need more parking, or they would need more parking. <laughs> Sound good? Sounds good. Okay. Anything else? Thank you, Thank you very much. Anything else?
No. We Another question. Anybody else that's like to speak in favor of this? Anybody here is speaking opposition to this? Anybody like to speak in opposition? See no one? I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Goods. All right. We have some, some alternatives. Beginning at step, staff findings and recommend that City Council approve the proposed specific use permit as presented. We can find that the specific use permit is not appropriate use for the property based on impacts the surrounding vicinity and to not recommend that City Council approve the specific use permit. We'll find that additional information or discussion is needed prior to making a recommendation and table the request to a certain date. Any question? Is there a motion? Move to accept staff findings and recommend approval of special use permit as presented. Second. 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 I like the second one. Yeah. Hey, that's okay. The motion passes. Item 2D, Gartens Auto Sales Civic Use Permit, request and review and approval of Civic Use Permit at property address 2221 West 6th Avenue to allow installation of LED display adjacent to a residence area. Sevens? Uh, this is a specific use permit for an electronic message center sign or commonly called an LED sign. Uh, the location um, is on 6th Avenue and this is 6th, this is Western and the property is shown in the hatched area. As you can see, um, the zoning district is CG, Commercial General, on the south side of 6th Avenue and on the north side it's RSS, small lot single family. That's the reason for the SUP because it's adjacent to this residential area. Getting their sign is going to be a uh, two application process. First is the SUP and this is the, the sign that they turned in with the application. Uh, the main portion of the sign, the top is a uh, 6 by 12, and the LED shown in the red is 5 by 8. Um, our other planner, Tom, does take care of the uh, sign permits, and he has talked to them because we had a concern about enlarging this sign from the existing sign that they have. This is a replacement and uh, it's very close to the right-of-way and so he has talked to them and, and conveyed our concern and they may have to alter the size of the sign which has nothing to do actually with the SUP it's just to let you know that uh, um, it at this size it does meet all the requirements the overhaul height is 18 feet 11 inches that'll probably stay the same it'll just be the width of the signs that may be different Our findings include the property is adjacent to a residentially zoned district, that's the reason for the specific use permit. The LED sign is less than 40% of the total sign area as required by code, and the LED sign meets all other code requirements. Are there any questions? Any questions? I do you have a question? We've talked about this, I think, a couple of times when we've had about three or four of these LED signs come through. Do we have, and it sounded like we didn't really have a lot in the past about how long a message could be up there, if it could be a continuous video or if it could be flashing or anything like that. Do we have any restrictions on any of that? Yes, we do. Okay. what I'd do without time. <laughs> <laughs> we all think that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Yeah. It, uh, let's see. 
It does have some things on here like uh, no blinking beams or beacons of light, uh, flashing or anything that looks like a traffic signal or stop sign or anything. Um, audio and live streaming video is, now, is not allowed. Um, the recorded video uh, sequence is no longer than 10 seconds. And um, there's some other things that go along. So we do have quite a few there are some for the electronic, well. yeah, for the electronic signs. Okay. Other questions? Thank you. Open the public hearing. Anybody that like to speak in favor of this SUP? In favor? Oh, I'd like to speak. Yes. State your name and address. My name is Brett Howerton. I have business at 2221 West 6th. I live at 6520 Coventry Road here in Stillwater. And I own, I own the business, and I'm the one applying for the... I thought my sign guy was going to be here, but I guess they're coming from McAllister. I'm glad I came. I asked them, do I need to be there? But, uh, no, I just... Uh, you know, I've had three signs at this location. This is the first time we've applied for the LED. Uh, just uh, thinking it would be an attractive addition to business and, and the location and uh, just wanted to be here in case there was any questions that anybody had for me if any I questions? can answer them. Have you spoken to the cat clinic people? I know they have a little sign right there. They put little messages and all that. Have you have you talked to them at all about this? Uh, no. Or just down from you? The, the, the cat clinic, uh, I wasn't aware. They, ha they have a stationary message board. Yeah. And then the motel has a rolling LED that uh, relax in or whatever it's called yeah. but uh, no I, I haven't talked to them about it okay. I just uh, trying to increase my business and thought it would be a, a good addition so anybody else any other questions thank you very much thank you. anybody else that's like to speak in favor of this anybody that'd like to speak against this SUP seeing no one I'll close the public hearing the alternatives are to accept, accept staff findings and recommend approval of the use permit or find that the SUP is not appropriate and recommend denial or continue or table. Any questions? Any questions? Any discussion? Do I hear a motion? Accept staff's <laughs> findings and recommend <laughs> approval of the special use permit. Second. The motion passes. Item three. Approval. Discussion policy action approval of the regular meeting summary of September 1st, 2015. Any discussion? Move to approve. Second. Next plan commission meeting is October 6, 2015. I will not be here that night. That is my 62nd birthday. I'll be out celebrating that night. Not very late, though. Does that mean we're not invited? <laughs> wow. Thank you, we have to be here. He makes his plans. You all have here. to be here. See that? So I'm giving my notice right now that I will not be here for that meeting. Did I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. We stand adjourned. So you're not birthday cake? <laughs> I mean, God. been a serious accident in Greenwich Village on West 10th Street. Twelve firefighters have been injured. Five are reported to be in serious condition and are hospitalized. The fire captain on scene said they were responding to a call that proved to be a false alarm. But looking at the injuries and all the damages, the captain told this reporter there's really no such thing as a false alarm.
your local fire department protects you. Take it seriously. Hello, I'm Officer Howell with the Stillwater Police Department. We just want to tell citizens that no dumpster in the city of Stillwater is for public use and that each one of these, including trash carts, are assigned to a residence or business. A person cannot dump trash into another one's trash receptacle. This is considered illegal dumping. If a person is caught doing this, he or she is subject to a fine of up to $540.